Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Becker once again coming out here saying that these seven crypto coins will 13x by March. Last chance for huge crypto gains or so he would say. I'm going to go ahead and break down this 47 minute video in 10 minutes or less. So if you enjoy this kind of content, as always, like and subscribe for our brief overviews of the top crypto gaming news in the space. And let's get right into it. So we had the Bitcoin ETF news. It passed. Everybody's really excited about Bitcoin. He says that you have to listen to Bitcoin because Bitcoin is the purveyor of truth for what's going to happen in this crypto bull market. Now, of course, I amplified what he said uh, but bitcoin right now it's had a bit of a correction you know we were over at 48,000 almost 49k at some point now we're at 42k what is going on and is this a sell the news event he says no because if you look at the stock market aka the S&P 500 you're going to see that the S&P 500 looks like it is a trailblazer and going hard so as long as the S&P 500 continues to show strength the stock market continues to do well Bitcoin is likely to do well, and that's that. Another reason why he doesn't think this is a sell the news event is because he gave the example of Cardano. Now, I don't know what he has against Cardano. Personally, you know, I actually kind of like the Cardano community. Uh, there's some great crypto gaming projects out there like uh, Cornucopius, which you should go ahead and check out because they're pretty awesome. Uh, but Cardano here is, to him, a sell the news event because back over in 2021, uh, there was a big update that was coming. I don't know the exact name for it, so please don't come after me. But it went all the way to almost $3. Incredible price action. And people just took profit. Because after the update happened, there was no reason to be excited for Cardano versus Bitcoin after the bump happened with the Bitcoin ETF. Now there's more liquidity for people to actually buy Bitcoin. It's become easier to buy Bitcoin. And the reason to be excited for Bitcoin is still the same. You know, it's still digital gold. People are still very excited for the asset and how it can perform in the future. And so there's a reason to hold Bitcoin. He doesn't think it's a sell the news event. Amazing stuff. I love it. Now let's get into the coins. What you really came here for. He's still very excited for gaming as well as AI related coins. Uh, he also gave me some gambling coins, which I'm not the biggest person for gambling, but it does exist and I'm not going to be one to sleep on it. So the first coin he talked about was Superverse. Uh, he said that there are a lot of things that are going to be coming out, but that he can't talk about. So maybe this is a sleeper that's going to randomly come out. It's supposed to become more of an infrastructure play in 2024. So we'll see how that ends up playing out. Avalanche, he says that if you're going to invest in very, very large cap coins, Avalanche is his pick. It's the only one he's going to pick. He doesn't care about the other ones. He doesn't care about Solana. doesn't care about Ethereum. Bitcoin won't buy them. He's only going to buy Avalanche. He thinks that they're going to have a better run than Solana in this bull run. So that's his thesis on why AVAX. He doesn't want to take risks on things and then only get a 3x game because he says that you're going to be a very sad person in the Thanksgiving table next year. Mutable X. Now, Mutable X is at a $2.6 billion market cap. He said that if you're getting on IMX, you are boring. But if you want to get into crypto gaming and you want to be boring, then go to Mutable. That's all he said. The next one he talked about was Beam, an infrastructure play with a $900 million market cap. He thinks this could go to the multiple billions of dollars, which I hope so because it's already at almost a billion dollars. I agree. I tend to agree with this thesis. I do think Beam is going to be a leader in the crypto gaming markets come this bull market. So I'm also bullish on Beam. Alluvium. Uh, he talked about Alluvium. He also mentioned the fact that he doesn't think that Alluvium is going to hit new all-time highs during this crypto gaming bull market. He actually says that during the crypto gaming bull market, he expects that Alluvium is only going to hit somewhere around a $500 price point, which would still be pretty good. I mean, we're still, what, like five point something X from where we are right now, which is not bad. Not the most incredible returns in the world. It's okay. Another one he talked about right after was Big Time. He says that Big Time is very bullish for individual games. Uh, he sees Big Time being a very good project. He doesn't personally own a lot of Big Time, but does say that he sees a lot of bullish stuff on Big Time. So there you go for the token. Another individual gaming project that he said is going to kill it in this crypto gaming bull market is Star Atlas. He thinks the Star Atlas is a sleeper. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I think it is. Shrapnel. He talks about how he called out Shrapnel at 10 cents, which fair enough. I mean, I'm also a person that's called out a million different crypto gaming projects very early on. It's very easy to get crypto gaming projects right when it's a bull market <laughs> because we tend to be right. Like if I've been here for two years, a lot of the coins that I've invested in are up tremendously. I mean, I made six figures just in the last two months of 2024 alone 
because I positioned my bags during the bear market. It's not like I was some kind of genius or anything. I just went ahead, accumulated during the bear, and uh, I moved forward from there. So I love Shrapnel. I do think that Shrapnel could have some pretty serious runs here. He thinks that, you know, Shrapnel could hit the hundreds of millions in market cap. I think so. I mean, that's a pretty safe assumption. It's already kind of already done that. So for sure, bullish on Shrapnel. Sidus, he says Sidus burns a lot of tokens and it's got a launch pad. And he really likes Launchpad. We'll hear more about his Launchpad fascination over here. Right now at a $51 million market cap, he thinks it's going to hit some around 100, 200 million market cap. Not crazy gains, which if he was talking about the 3x gain thing and how it was kind of sad that it would do that. I don't know how to feel about this one, but Sidus is one of those. Altura. He thinks that Altura is in a very saturated niche in terms of launch pads, as well as infrastructure plays. Altura is an infrastructure play, and he's like, okay, there's a million of these L1 infrastructure plays out there. It's way oversaturated. However, Altura is doing something unique. He says that Altura is a NFT infrastructure play and is one of the only ones doing this. So he sees it as very undervalued. He sees a lot of potential in Altura leading into the crypto gaming bull run. And um, I'm like, fair enough. Yeah, that's a good take. Cedify, I love Cedify. I think Cedify, uh, he says that Cedify could go up to a billion dollar market cap. I think Cedify could go even higher. He, he didn't think that Cedify could hit a new all time high. I think it's possible. Even with the increase in market cap, I still think that Cedify in this crypto gaming bull run is poised for some crazy, crazy gains. He likes Cedify. It's a launch pad crypto gaming leader right now. And I suspect that's going to continue. One of its competitors, though, is one he really likes here. It's called Neo Tokyo. He's part of Neo Tokyo. He made Neo Tokyo. Neo Tokyo's got bikes and they've got a launch pad. He loves launch pads. Uh, he obviously thinks his own coin is uh, very undervalued, which this is the part where I tell you that everything he's going to talk about on this video, he likely owns bags in. And it's probably the case with the things I cover on my videos. We probably own bags. It's important that you do your own research because, you know, we're buying the crypto coins that we're talking about. Please do your research because you should be positioning yourself in things that you believe in, not things that I've already accumulated three months ago. So paid network is the next one. And now we're leading a little bit into the broader spectrum. Uh, paid network is a launch pad, but it's for the broader crypto space. So if you're trying to get into gaming coins sometimes, but mostly some of the random broader coins, maybe you want to get into the AI narrative, question mark, then paid network is going to make sense for you. He thinks that this is severely undervalued, which is it's done a lot in terms of run. And uh, he thinks that a lot of people are going to be looking into paid network. Inspect. Inspect is a social platform. So if you're trying to get social statistics on NFTs and many, many, many other things in the world, Inspect is your place to go. I also own assets in Inspect. I think Inspect is an absolute killer in the crypto gaming space. A ton of crypto gaming people invested in it. And remember, I saw like Jiho and a ton of other people uh, ended up getting into Inspect very early on. I know that Alex Becker, I believe, is an advisor for these guys. Absolutely killing it right now in the space. You no, know, everything in social media uh, goes through social media, right? That's how it kind of works. So crypto, social media, social media, social media, everything just leads back to social media. It's like the Silk Road. Everything comes back over here. So my opinion on this is I think that social media brands are very hard to run. But if you've got a utility basis that is very predicated on one very specific thing, which is giving statistics and analytics and all these other different things... Inspect makes a heck of a lot of sense. It really does. And it's very unique. So I'm very bullish on them. So Powell AI is the next one. He started leading on to the AI narrative. Remember, he's very bullish on gaming AI. Powell is the one that he is invested in for the AI narrative. He says it's a large, chunky coin that has a lot of its circulating supply already out there. So he's pretty comfortable with that. And I'm like, okay, fair enough. Blockchain bets, gambling play. He thinks that blockchain bets is undervalued. And uh, I mean, it's $28 million market cap, had a bit of a run. I remember when Alex Becker started talking about it back in the day. Uh, for poker, he thinks poker is going to be a big narrative. He's putting his eggs on Virtue Poker. He has a big bag on Virtue Poker. It's at a $7 million market cap. 
still very low. A lot of people are using it already. Uh, if you don't want to be Alex Becker and you want to be someone else, he recommended poker. Uh, poker is at $1.9 million. It is right now a competitor to Virtue Poker. Obviously, it's the same thing. So if you don't want to be him, he's like, you can look into this one if you feel like it. He doesn't own anything in it. Now, horse racing, a lot of projects. Zed Run being one of them that he quoted in the video. He's like, okay, I love Zed Run. Wonderful stuff. Boom, right there. Zed Run. Nope. Now it's Crown. And he thinks Crown is going to be a crazy, crazy runner. Now, in terms of games that he's looking forward to, Bloodloop's going to have a token. He loves it. Chrono Forge, it's a roguelike game. He also loves it. There's Godzilla with Off the Grid, which he thinks is going to be the biggest release of the year. And the last one is Pixelmon, which he's going to be like, you know, you guys made fun of it, but it, it really came back, which I agree. It, it, I'm I'm surprised I faded that one. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'm trying to do it as fast as possible. Lots of gaming coins. Do you agree with his picks? Do you think these are going to be the Mooners? Or are there other Mooners that he doesn't have on his radar? Until the next time, stay classy. And that's all.